Here again is the fresh install of the blank slate boilerplate as it was in part 1. Part 6 will begin to develop the menu towards this stage of completion, taking it from the single menu of part 5 to the mobile first responsive, on click drop down menus here and with only a small amount of CSS and jQuery and no plugins. While it's unlikely a footer menu would look like this, the setup is perfect for demonstration. The menus are built for the later integration of the ARIA framework, standing for Accessible Rich Internet Applications. The accessibility will be demonstrated, but integrating the framework is a more advanced course later in the series. The first step to building the menus is to look at what WordPress is doing behind the scenes when two or more menus are using the WordPress defaults. Then to take a closer look at the options that WordPress gives us to overwrite these defaults using the parameters within the WP nav menu function. These were introduced in part 5. So let's begin. First, stripping back to a default state. At the end of part 5, there was only the one header menu and I'll run through all the steps of creating the footer menu shortly. In the Safari Inspector, the UL element of the header menu is currently selected and it shows that WordPress, by default, gives the UL element an ID of menu, menu 1. WordPress also gives the same UL a class of menu. If I now select the footer menu, locate its UL element, we see the same result. WordPress is doing its own thing. Notice it's creating the same class name of dot menu for all of its menus while creating unique IDs for each menu. Now to overwrite the default UL class. First in the footer.php file, left of screen, line 5, the WP nav menu function begins. I'll run through all the steps of creating the footer menu shortly. I'm going to insert the parameter for the custom menu class here. The parameter assigns the class of menu 1 to the menu UL. And in the header.php file, the WP nav menu function begins at line 21 and I'll reinsert the same parameter here. Now the WP nav menu function of the header looks precisely as it did in part 5. Back in the inspector and selecting the UL element of the header menu, now the custom class of menu 1 has overwritten the WordPress default class of menu. Selecting the UL of the footer menu, will show the same result. The parameters created a custom class of menu 1. As you'd expect, custom classes are not limited and so back in the footer.php file, back at line 5, the custom class could be called menu 2. And taking a look at it in the inspector, there's the updated class of menu 2. And when selecting the UL of the header menu, the custom class of menu 1 remains. That's one instance of the overwrite capabilities and they'll come to life as I build out the menus and so I'm going to revert the site back to how it was at the end of part 5 and begin building the menus. I've added a few more links since then but that's all. And this is the CSS as it was at the end of part 5. Now assigning a background colour like this will work but the specificity in the CSS could be improved. Selecting the UL for that purpose, like this, however, won't work, and we'll see that it's because the CSS is looking for a UL that has a container with the class of menu 1. But this class is assigned to the UL itself, not to a container of the UL. Obviously, I know in advance which method of selection is to be used for the menus, but staying on theme of what WordPress is doing behind the scenes, Let's look at the containers of the UL. In the site, if I refresh, no surprises, the CSS is broken. The red background has not taken effect. In the inspector, with the menus UL selected, we can confirm that the custom class of menu 1 is assigned to the UL element. Meanwhile, the containers, first this div and then the nav element, both have their own and different class names to that of our custom class of menu 1. Also note that the nav element here exists in our themes HTML in the header.php file, but this div container doesn't. The div is another instance of WordPress creating something behind the scenes. WordPress is giving it a class of menu, menu 1 container. 
This can also be overwritten in the parameters of the WP nav menu function. I'm going to do precisely that and then use it in the CSS. So back in the header.php file, just below line 20, pasting in the parameter which first selects the container class and then the class itself is defined here. I'm calling it some other container name. It can be anything. I'll copy the class, then back in the CSS at line 39, paste it in. Now this method of selecting the UL is correct because it will find a container with this class name. And in the site, refresh and result. A red background and the margin top is back. And in the inspector, the new container class of our parameter successfully overwritten the WordPress default. We're looking at the options for selecting the menus. It all depends on what you're trying to build. And it relates to CSS specificity, avoiding conflict between menus and more. Now back to the CSS. The method I want is this. It's a portable class while freeing up the containers for other uses, which I will be demonstrating. The menus I'm building rely on the container divs. But for my current purposes, I'm going to stick with the default containers. And so, back to the header.php file, I'll remove the parameter from line 20. Now to complete the CSS. The site is mobile first responsive. And so up first, line 58 is the CSS common to all screen sizes. Line 64, mobile first, and line 94, desktop and wider screens, which is currently using a min width media query targeting screen widths above 769 pixels. Back to mobile first and drop in the CSS for the top level menu, not including the submenus at this point. The method of selecting both element and class is consistent. I've abandoned the margin left on the list items from part five. Of note is the positioning first on line 77. The LI element has relative position. That's for the positioning of the on click button later. Now to desktop and wider screens and drop in the CSS for the top level menu. And again, the positioning is the only thing of note at this point. Position relative here is for the position absolute of the submenus. Position static of the LI element at line 106 cancels the position relative of the LI at mobile first on line 77 here. This is because the positioning of the on click button at wider screens is slightly different, but we're coming to all that. And finally at line 110, display is in line at wider screens, contrary to the block level elements of mobile first. Now to the site and refresh and view it responsively. And so there's both mobile first and wider screens. Now for the submenus. We first need to create the submenu links in WordPress admin. In the admin, under appearance and the subheading menus, we see the header menu created in part five and named menu one. I've already created two submenu links here, purposely using long titles. And I'll just click save, top right of screen. Visit the site and there's the submenus, doing strange things to the design at the moment. And notice the very long link titles, the CSS will be managing those. So the blank slate theme requires CSS rules for the submenus. And back to mobile first, on line 64, at line 67, the rules for the top level menu have been folded and at line 91, I'll drop in the CSS for the submenus. I've commented the display none for now. Again, barebones CSS, line 104, 106 and 107 are worth noting as the rules that handle the long link titles. Now at wider screens, again, I folded the CSS for the top level menu at line 125 and starting at line 144, I'll drop in the CSS. Of note here is the position absolute to position the sub menus directly beneath the top parent UL. The LI reverts to display block contrary to its parent list items. And here I'm redefining the LI as position relative for the positioning of the on click button to be added later. And in the site and refresh, 
Now the submenus look more presentable and the extra long link titles are restricted in length. These dots here after the link indicating that back in the CSS the text overflow property is doing its job. And viewing the menu responsively. Now that's OK. And so now to create the footer menu. I'll be repeating some of the steps of part 5 on creating menu locations but it's necessary to demonstrate the subtleties of creating multiple menu locations. So first to the header.php file. Copy the entire WP nav menu function from line 20. Go to the footer.php file and on line 4 paste in the function. Now to rename the theme location to footer menu. Keeping the parameter for the custom class of menu 1 from the header menu. Now using it as a portable class. And now in the functions.php file right of screen line 12 within the function that registers the menu locations and directly before the comma insert a bracket. This closes the parameter that's registering the header menu's theme location. I'm going to copy it and directly after the comma paste it in. Then change the name of the theme location to footer menu. Change this to footer menu. This is the name that appears in the WP admin as the display location. And then place a comma just after it and we're done. Now to the WordPress admin, looking very bottom and center screen under the heading menu settings, currently only one display location is showing the location of the header menu and that's because the footer menu has to be created in the admin as well as in the theme files. So to do this, select create menu top left of screen and name the menu, I'm calling it footer menu 1. The name here can be absolutely anything. Then click create menu top right of screen and now center screen the second display location appears for the footer menu and this is the name that was created in the functions.php file highlighted here. This too can be named anything. The final step is to assign the new menu to the display location shown center screen called footer menu. We do this in the admin. First notice top left of screen there's a newly available drop down listing both menus. Then to assign the new menu to its location, select the Manage Locations tab directly above here. Now we see the menu's theme location and from the drop down list to the right, select the footer menu 1. Save changes, back to Edit Menus tab top left of screen and recalling the drop down menu from earlier, the Select menu to edit highlighted here shows that the footer menu 1 is currently selected and so we can begin to add the links. So select from the list of pages, select add to menu, I'm creating a sub menu link, save the menu top right of screen and visit the site and it's done. Now a last look at what WordPress is doing behind the scenes. With the header menu selected in the inspector, the WordPress default ID for the UL contains the name Menu1. So does the default container class. Selecting the footer menu, we see the name footer menu1 within the ID. And the same again within its div container immediately above it. So unless we overwrite the defaults, WordPress is using the names that were created in the admin screen here when we created the menu. Now that brings us neatly to the end of this tutorial and leads into part 7 because the next step is to unqueue the custom jQuery script that will add the interactivity to the drop down submenus and responsive design. In summary I'll leave this and add that making use of the overwrite capabilities and the defaults is a powerful tool set for building sites of multiple menus. So thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in part 7.